So the final question um, that I'm going to answer uh, this week comes from Sean Sendlinger, who says, I'm a small molecule computational chemist in moving to larger molecules, I can see how doing calculations on smaller portions of a given molecule simultaneously, then combining answers at the end, would speed up the overall calculation. I'm wondering how this splitting up for a problem best occurs. Have programs been written that do this step, or does the end user have to help decide how the splitting up occurs? And that's an excellent question. So I thought maybe somebody might not be familiar with this area. So I found a video on YouTube of someone doing a molecular dynamic simulation using a package called Gromax, which is actually um, produced um, a European package and several of the praise projects are actually in, involved in um, working with Gromax. Um, and so here's a simulation of DNA in water. Um, make it a bit bigger. So I think the most important um, point to realize about the simulation is that uh, the, the, the DNA is made, made up of lots and lots of little um, atoms or molecules which are simulated as single entities. So, so, so in the program you have lots and lots of um, maybe particular atoms which are simulated independently, but they're stuck together with bonds. There might be, you know, there's obviously thousands and thousands of individual particles being simulated here. What you can't see though, that is very important, this is DNA in water. This is simulated in a, in a bath of water um, because you know, living um, processes take take place in water, and and the water molecules have to be simulated as well. So they've obviously been grayed out here, so they don't they don't you can actually see the DNA molecule. So there are you know, there are th potentially millions of, of of atoms and molecules being simulated here because it's in water. And so what you can do, I'll pause this for a second. The, the, this the, what you might say is you know if my um, computer isn't uh, my CPU core isn't powerful enough to do simulate this entire DNA. A piece of DNA here. I could split it up into pieces and give each piece to a separate CPU core and they clearly have to communicate with each other. But there's really two issues there. One is that you need to make sure that each CPU core has the same amount of work. And so for example, you know, this looks like it's, I mean, I'm, I'm not an expert, this looks like it's quite hard to simulate. You might want to, so you know, a small piece of this might involve a lot of work. But out here where there's just water, maybe that's easier and you can give a bigger piece. And so the first um, issue is load balance. If you're gonna split this problem up, you need to make sure that each CPU core gets, gets roughly the same amount of work. The other issue is, of course, is communications. You wouldn't want to give a particular CPU, you want to give a CPU core uh, blocks of, 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 um, of particles to work on, so that at least when those particles interact with each other, that, that, that there's no communications to another CPU core. If you gave a particular, if you gave, you know, um, this, this, this particle to one CPU core, this to another, this to another, any, there'd be a lot of communications going on. So you want to divide the calculation up into, into regular blocks to minimize communication. But um, so, so so that's called domain decomposition. How do you take a problem up and split it up into pieces so that you you make the the, the load balance um, good each CPU core each each domain you're gonna you're gonna subdomain you've got a large domain simulation domain you're gonna split it up into subdomains and potentially give a different subdomain to each CPU core. You want to make sure that each subdomain has roughly equivalent work. But you also want to arrange them so that there's minimum communication. And that is quite a challenging problem, but there are standard algorithms for doing that. And Gromax will have a number of algorithms in it. Um, it will be able to do it automatically. However, you know, as a user, they may, it may have different strategies for different simulations, and you may have to tell it which strategy to, you may be some expertise needed to say, look, you know, no matter what strategy you use, the calculation is going to be correct. But I know in this, you know, if you use this strategy, it's going to work faster. So although um, sophisticated parallel molecular dynamics packages like Gromax can do this stuff automatically, there's probably still some tuning, some user input required. The other thing, though, which is very important is that, of course, these particles move. And so the domain decomposition you start off with at the start of the calculation may not be valid at the end. So not only do you have a very difficult problem to solve, it's the dynamic problem. As the calculation goes on, um, maybe it starts to be that one CPU core has a lot of particles and it maybe needs to offload them to other ones. Again, uh, standard packages like, like Gromax will have mechanisms and algorithms for doing that. But it is very, very challenging, especially as you scale up to many, many thousands of CPU, hundreds of thousands of CPU cores. So to... Um, to really summarize what you've um, you've um, outlined is it, a real problem. How do you divide the particles up in a molecular dynamic simulation so that it works well in parallel? There are a lot of packages out there, and uh, you know, thousands, hundreds of thousands of man hours have gone into developing these packages. Um, a lot of expertise to try and do it automatically. It's not easy, and you may require some user input. Uh, but the main thing is like don't don't go and write it yourself. 
you know, the, the, if you're going to want to do large scale molecular simulations, the first thing, or any, any large scale simulation, but molecular dynamics, you, you should look out there and see are there packages out there which, which work, uh, which, where someone has done all the hard work and, and which can do the calculation for me. And if you go with something like Gromax, you, get a cap, you can get a, a program you can run on your laptop. It will run on hundreds of thousands of CPU cores, doing all the, the parallelization and communication automatically for you. And things like Gromax will even use accelerators. So if at runtime it realizes you have GPUs, it will offload some of the calculation to GPUs. So, um, so hopefully that's answered your question. Uh, and I'll just run the video for a little more because it's really quite quite a nice video here. Okay, thanks very much for that question. It was very interesting.